You really can't talk much about Paul Barton without talking about his violin. He had been a concert violinist in the Youth Canadian Orchestra for many, many years, and so really knew what real sound was. He suddenly realized that his violin uh, did not sound quite as good on the stereo, and it really sort of started his quest on uh, making hi-fi better. Paul always had a, a very focused concept on what a speaker should sound like. He was really honed in on trying to get the most natural sound he could possibly get from a loudspeaker. Where Paul really took off was when he worked with Floyd Toole at the NRC, and they really took a scientific approach uh, to what makes a loudspeaker sound most natural to, to people. I've spent more time in this anechoic chamber than any single person. I've been coming here since uh, 1974 where I was introduced to Dr. Floyd Toole, who basically was very interested in the science side of things and I was very interested in the product development side of things. Very quickly became good friends and allies in trying to improve the art of loudspeakers, which we believe now has become more of a science. I've developed loudspeakers here for so many years that the process and the intuition which I've gained makes it very comfortable for me to design loudspeakers here. The Imagine T3 is the newest PSB loudspeaker and it is our top speaker in the Imagine range. It replaces the Synchrony, which was a very, very popular speaker for PSB over the years, but it's brought in some new technology, especially in driver design and, uh, and cabinet construction. And one of the biggest weaknesses of sound reproduction in any music system is the ability for it to produce dynamic range which is real world. And if anyone were to ask me, what would you do with any loudspeaker to make an improvement? Well number one is I would try and increase the sensitivity which I've been able to do over the Synchrony one. The second thing that I would want to improve in a loudspeaker that would be to increase its bandwidth and this speaker does go down deeper than the Synchrony one. The third thing that I would say is to minimize distortion. We've worked very hard to optimize the driver designs using what we call symmetrical drive. We also use Faraday rings to minimize the third harmonic distortion in the magnet structure. All of these components help to improve uh, distortion and linearity in, in the drivers themselves. This is definitely our best effort, the T3. The configuration is somewhat unique to PSB, uh, not done by many other companies, if any, and that is what we call a five-way transitional design. The system has three woofers, three st stacked on top of one another. The three woofers are in their own enclosures with their own port tubes, independently tuned. Uh, one of the advantages of putting separate cabinets for the woofers in a tall cabinet is that you can often get a standing wave inside the enclosure, which is proportionate to frequencies that the low frequency drivers produce. And in the case of a T3, it's somewhere around the 100 hertz region. If the cabinet is subdivided internally, you actually increase the frequency that occurs at so that it's out of band to the frequencies that the driver is actually producing. So in, in essence, we've eliminated the problems with standing waves that occur in all tower loudspeakers. The other advantage of putting the cabinets in separate enclosures and putting separate crossovers on it is that not all three woofers cross over at the same frequency. So all I want to do is I want the mid-range to work only with the top woofer so that it's in phase and the crossover is working properly. If we let all three woofers cover up to that frequency, it's a dog's breakfast. The top woofer goes from 20 hertz to 500 hertz and it's the only driver that crosses over to the mid-range. And then the mid-ranges cross over to the tweeter. Uh, the tweeter crosses over just over 2K from the mid-range driver. With a fourth order Linquist rally where the drivers are not coincidentally spaced, in other words, they're not in the same acoustic point, you actually need to put the tweeter below the driver it crosses over from, simply because the lobe where they are in phase tends to tilt in the direction of the mid-range driver when the tweeter is below it. So what I'm saying here is that the T3, where the mid tweeter is below the mid-range, the speaker sounds and measures the same 
from the seated to the standing position because the in-phase lobe between the tweeter and the mid-range driver are in phase because the lobe is slightly tilting up. When someone buys an, an Imagine T3, they're getting a loudspeaker that is at the very highest levels of performance. Little do they realize what they've really purchased. What they've got in front of them is a culmination of Paul Barton's 40 years of scientific research, listening, testing, manufacturing prowess right in front of them. Well, in a nutshell, the T3 is my best effort. It's going to be difficult to outperform this one. I don't know what I would do to get much better, but maybe in the future I will. Who knows? But this is my pride and joy.